We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Vì thứ pháp hội cập nhật thiết chúng sanh Tịnh chiến diệu pháp luân nhau đạo rõ mùng Như há liệu sanh thoát tư đi khổ đà là tất chứng vô sanh. How much of the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô Sanantho Suche Do Ye Ở La Hồ Đi Sam Miao Sam Phu Tô Sye. Nam mô Ta Đa Tha Tô Ya Đa Ya La Ha Đế Tam Miêu Tam Mô Đà Tọa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang 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 wei miao fa ba hi chen wan che nan zao yu wo jin jian wen de shou chi yan jie ru lai chen shi a Buddhist and Bodhisattvas, great Master Ching Liang, great Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good no advisors, are made of all. Chu Fo Pu Sa, Ching Liang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Ge Wei Chu Jia Ren, Ge Wei Shang Chi Shi, made of all. Chi Phật Bồ Tát Kiên Thưa, Thanh Lương Đại Sư, Hòa Thượng Kiên Khóa, Quý Thầy Cô, và Quý Vị Điện Trí Thức Anh Như Đạo Phật. Okay, hello everyone. Today is the 23rd of uh, October 2022. Uh, just in a flash, almost the year is gone. Where uh, this is our last lecture of, uh, of on a weekend like this, and because uh, next weekend we start the 4G, and then after that we have uh, the uh, uh, Chanchi. So we only lecture uh, sutras on weekend in the evening. Okay, so there will be some changes you know, coming up. Mm. It's March, the end of the year. Anyway, uh, uh, we are uh, here together to continue discussing chapter one: uh, the wondrous adornments of rulers of the world. Uh, so, when looking at the who's who in the world, uh, and uh, you look at their dormants, that's how uh, you uh, uh, that's how you learn about the Dharma. It's kind of fascinating thing a way to start uh, discussing a very profound sutra by telling us about the adornments of these, uh, these big shots, okay? Uh, and uh, we are looking at the slide 727, uh, Sutra text, Celestial King Soaring Thunder Cloud.
最上云阴天王。Mm. So this、uh, skin and the heavens is sound. Zhui Shang Yin Yin. So、uh, he can reach the heavens, the clouds.、Uh, so thunder cloud,、mm. thunder cloud, Yin、mm. Yin.、Mm. Okay, I don't know what to say about this. Seven twenty-nine, celestial king, supreme light among the multitudes of wonders. 众庙最圣光天王 Ah, for this particular heavenly king, um, uh, he manifests a lot of different uh wonderful uh appearances, wonderful manifestations. And、um, among which uh, he he uh, he uh, emits light, uh, and and uh, the light that is uh, that is uh, very 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 bright, unsurpassed, and unsurpassed. Seven thirty one, celestial king, wonderful cow, light. 妙计光明天王 This particular king here, ruler here,、uh, he has a cow that emits light. That is、uh, most wonderful. Okay,、uh, people wonder at uh, at uh, the light when they see the cow from、uh, emitted from uh, from uh, the light emitted from the cow from his cow. Seven thirty-three, celestial king accomplishing joyful wisdom. 成就喜会天王 Ah,、uh, this particular heavenly king here, he got there because、um, because he became enlightened, and in the process of becoming enlightenment, he specialized. In the Dharma door of uh, of uh, enjoy rejoicing in his practice, and that's how he opened his wisdom.、Uh, in, for example, in our era in Dharma and the era here in the Sahara world, the way that we train you here in American way、uh, in our particular era is to hard work. So it's a lot of suffering. If you suffer. Uh, chances are that you have a chance to improve、uh, spiritually. Okay, his dharma door is quite different. He actually,、um, actually, uh, he, uh, he, um, he, uh, his, his wisdom came about uh, through uh, through. Uh, To emphasizing on on the、uh, the joys of cultivation, celestial king, flower light, cow, 华光祭天王 This seven thirty six, this king, heavenly king here,、uh, has a cow that emits light, has a、uh, shape of flowers. Okay,、uh, remind you of flowers. Seven thirty-seven and celestial king universally viewing the ten directions. 普见十方天王 Okay, seven thirty-eight and the tenth representative of the countless celestial kings、uh, who were gathered here there to listen to the Buddha. Expounding on the Avatamsaka Sutra,、uh, his his state is that、um, he contemplates the ten directions,、uh, meaning that he cares for what's happening. His influence here is、uh, pervades the ten directions. He contemplates ten directions all over.、Uh, ten direction, okay. Upper and lower, and then the the the, the other eight directions here on the uh, on the uh, uh, the plane. Uh, so 
so that he uh, he worked by by uh, that's his range, uh, the ten directions, all over. Seven thirty nine. These and others acted as leaders of countless number of kings of the heavens of bliss from transformations. 如是等而为上首，其数无量。Mm. And so, seven forty.、Uh, so these are ten leaders of the group of heavenly kings in the desire realm,、uh, the fifth desire heaven,、uh, the, the fifth level of desire heavens, called the heavens of bliss from transformations.、Mm. Seven forty one, and they all diligently tamed all sentient beings, causing them to attain liberation. 切勤调伏一切众生，令得解脱 Seven forty two, it says here. Okay, again, the emphasis for these heavenly kings is that. Even though the heavenly kings, meaning they own the world, they own their domain, they own their empire, but they still are very vigorous in their spiritual practice. Okay, and that's what that's what separates、uh, professionals from well, the、uh, unprofessionals. The professionals have the chance to. Uh, work on their on their vigor, so that they、uh, they diligently practice without quitting, without giving up.、Mm. And what do they do, do besides、uh, applying themselves? Uh, they apply themselves to tame all sentient beings. Sentient beings are unruly; they are uncontrollable.、Uh, and so, what they do is they figure out ways to subdue and tame all sentient beings. Okay, why are sentient beings? Why do they need to be tamed? At all? Why do do kids need to be tamed? Why do sentient beings need to be tamed? There's a clue here. Why do they become a big shot? Okay, and they feel it's necessary to tame sentient beings, living beings. Anyone? What's that? Is there a question? I cannot see it here, but you see it on your tablet,、yeah. on your laptop. There's a problem here with the with the、uh, with the、uh, desktop. Oh, there. Wei Mang, go ahead. Um. Uh. Well, Andres, I think yes.、Uh, sentient beings would destroy themselves and others in a very bad way if、uh, they were entombed. But why? Why would they destroy themselves and others? Because, because we're crazy, master. Because they are Russians. I think, I, I think all of us are crazy. And if、uh, there weren't、um, bodhisattvas, Careful, Vesco, just behind you sits a person of Russian descent. You can tell by the name, Georgiev. Not only just Russian, but a particular area of, of Russia, I believe, like close to Georgia. Sure, I think uh, I think um, if there weren't bodhisattvas and Buddhas looking after people and、uh, sentient beings, 
I don't think we would have gotten this far. Okay, that's correct. But but why is why is it necessary for sense in uh, for bodhisattvas to tame living beings? What I'm getting at, I'm, I, I know you 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 uh, you give me the right answer. What I'm trying to get at, and my question is not that well formulated, well asked, uh, is what I'm getting to is that. Mm, sentient beings need to be subdued, need to be tamed because they have an ego. The ego needs to be tamed, the ego needs to be subdued. Okay? Wei uh, Mao. to go in the good way, stay on the good side, otherwise we will go berserk. Come again. Um, I think for living beings like me, I have no sense, at first I have no sense of direction. So we need somebody to tempt us so that we can be able to stay on the good side and do good things. Okay, that's correct. In general, that's correct. But there's a specific reason why that you need to be tamed. The reason is that the existence of the ego. The ego is unruly. The ego is unpredictable. We're, not, we're talking about ordinary people. We're not talking about crazy people who are like depressed or who are bipolar, who are, have anxiety and all those other issues. I'm talking even like normal, so-called ordinary people. Uh, they have an ego, they have a sense of a self. The self is totally unpredictable and unruly. And that's why the, those beings who are still are uh, selfish, they're very, very challenging. It's very challenging to try to tame them. It's very, very difficult. And that's why uh, these heavenly kings, uh, they have to work very hard to tame and subdue living beings. Okay? And, and when they subdue them, uh, it, help, it helps them attain liberation. Okay? Mm. So, 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 attain liberation here refers to uh, put an end to their afflictions. Uh, you are li they are liberated from suffering. Suffering a caused by uh, having afflictions. Okay? And as long as you have an ego, you will have afflictions. Go ahead, Wei Mountain. I'm not going to wait for the sign from uh, uh, anymore because the sign seems to, seem to be struggling with the, uh, with the computer here. Master, it feels like uh, the ego's only job is really to like take you out of samadhi. It's not taking out samadhi. The ego says, I don't want to enter samadhi because when you enter samadhi, I have very little room to maneuver. Yes, but then even when you're in, in samadhi, the ego keeps pound, pounding it. I mean, for me, I mean, as, as I get deeper in samadhi, the ego keeps pounding on me saying, get out, get out. And um, it's just, that's what it seems like it wa wants to do. It wants to keep you from entering samadhi, yeah, and staying in it. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Uh, the ego refuses to go away. Yeah, that's why when you enter samadhi, what happens? Yeah, when you enter samadhi, uh, a lot of different types of thoughts cease to exist. They, 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 they stop. They come to a full stop. 
Okay, and that means that the ego is diminished. Remember, thoughts are one component of the self. Okay, as long as, long as you consider yourself to be an intellect, as long as you subscribe to thinking, you believe it's thinking and depend on your thoughts, on your intellect, to rationalize the world, to explain the world to you, and that's the function of the ego. The ego demands to have it his way. Okay? Uh, and um, when you enter Samadhi, part of our Chan training, part of our spiritual, train, spiritual training is that and what you do, you go through, you do chanting of the ceremonies, okay? Or you meditate, or you recite the Buddha's name. All the Buddhist spiritual practices are designed to help you enter Samadhi, including standing there and doing ceremonies, or walking around, circumambulating, is still designed to help you enter Samadhi. All right? Uh, and when you enter samadhi, the thoughts, uh, the thoughts will cease to exist. Certain types of thoughts will cease to exist, and therefore it diminishes the ego. That's how your wisdom has a chance to come to the fore. Is that clear? So whatever in Buddhism we do is designed to bring you to that point you enter, some, uh, enter samadhi. Okay? And depending on your level of blessings, you have eventually have to exit samadhi because that's all you have. Okay? So it's not so much that, um, that we choose to exit samadhi. It's because we don't have enough blessings to remain in samadhi because when you're in samadhi, it feels very good and you are liberated from all sorts of sufferings. Okay? Mm. Next group, 743, where the, uh, the heavens are the masteries over others' transformation. Okay? That's the last desire heaven, the sixth desire heaven in our realm. Mm. 744, moreover, there were innumerable kings of the heavens of mastery over others' transformations. We have a change of, uh, of uh, personnel. Oh, yes, okay. No one tells me anything around here. Anyway, 745, commentary. This is the sixth desire heaven. That's where uh, they uh, have masteries over others' transformation, uh, meaning that um, uh, they transform all the gods' bliss, uh, meaning uh, from... Uh, from uh, playing music, listening music, to the pleasures, uh, various pleasures, into their own. And that's how they attain great freedom and uh, feel very at ease. Okay? In other words, this is the, the Buddhist or Chinese Buddhist polite way of stating that these beings steal the pleasure. The pleasure is, the, is stolen the pleasure they experience is actually stolen from others. When others experience a lot of pleasure, they come and they steal from you. Okay? Hmm. 746, in particular, commentary. Hmm. And what did they do? Uh, what they specialize in doing, uh, this is, again, this is this, they have in the sixth heaven in the desire realm. It has meaning as at the top of, 
top level of the the heavens in our realm, desire realm. Okay, what they do is they are way on top of it because they're watching over the desire realm for those beings who are weak in samadhi. And they what they do is they grab those beings and induce them to seek pleasures. Okay, uh, how does that work? When these beings uh, ex seek for pleasure and experience pleasure, and then the heavenly gods will then steal those pleasures from those beings and make it theirs because they cannot generate their own uh, pleasures. And you have to steal it from others. Way Mount, go ahead. Thank you, Master. First of all, I just want to say I'm so thankful that you are back in California after your travels. Welcome back, Master. Uh, thank you very much. I'm glad to be back. I had to uh, travel through the ocean, and I was fretting that the airplane may not uh, uh, make it through the vast ocean. And, and, uh, and, and I prayed upon Medicine Master Buddha's blessings so that I would not meet with untimely death. Oi! Accidents. <laughs> A tough boy, look at that. Before he cries, oh, man, man, mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> They're getting tougher and tougher, the boys here in our temple. I think I was more scared than they are. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Con continue. I, we, we all hope he's okay. They all what? We all hope the boy is okay. Oh, yeah. He seems to only lost a uh, you know, few teeth or so. <laughs> there you grow. Back up. Yes? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Master. My, my question is, um, are these kings of heavenly mastery? Sorry, I'm just getting introduced to them, so I don't know if I'm saying their name right. But are they the good guys or the bad guys? They are the bad guys. So, so why are we talking about them? <laughs> why not? <laughs> well... Because the celestial kings, they're the good guys, right? No. Like, they're, they're the bad guys too? Yes. Where have you been? <laughs> okay. Uh, but they're all helping subduing the, the, the demons and the evil forces to help us all cultivate. Even though they're the bad guys, they still help us, right? No. Where have you been? Jeez. I feel as though I've lost the thread since you went to Korea. I... Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> okay. Take a break. Don't try so hard. I know you've been working hard. Take it easy. <laughs> okay. These are the demons. They live, they dwell, they're all gathered in the top at the top of the desire heaven, our realm. Okay? So that they can see and look. It's like they're at the top floor. Therefore, they can see everyone else below them so that they get to pick and choose who the next victim is going to be. Okay? And so they're very, very powerful. What they do is their sole purpose in life is to destroy the world. And amazingly, they're very good at it. They're very good at being very destructive to the point where eventually they will succeed and they destroy our world. 
And so what happens? My American friend, pale face, I might add, pale face American friend, okay, is that our jobs for the people who cultivate Mahayana is to keep them in check, to slow them down. Because we didn't, they would destroy the world in a flash. Because that's what they do. They cannot help themselves. They love to be destructive. Being destructive is the nature, is who they are. Okay? Well, whatever they do, they will, is, is, is designed to harm others. And how do they do that? They, in particular, they excel at inducing living beings to pursue pleasures, indulge in pleasure. Not just simply pursue, but also indulge in pleasures. For example, can you name something you can think of that living beings like to indulge in? Hello? Anybody out there? Way mom. Rap music. Rap music. Oh, God. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I always uh, can't figure out why you guys like rap music. Anyway, rap music, absolutely. Okay? The people like 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 uh, Andres who 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 uh, who, uh, who derive great pleasures from rap music. That's the first thing that comes to mind for him. Anyone else? Yes. I would Number say, two. I would say eating, but then there's something that starts eating. With, and yeah. No. <laughs> well, the other one it starts with an S. As sleep. <laughs> Three letter. Three letter. Sins. Yes, it is a sin. <laughs> Master is PG thirteen. There are kids here. <laughs> I will. And sometimes you know, I, 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 I know you guys never really notice. So sometimes I'm like have a fog in my mind it's because I'm working. And sometimes, you know, uh, the mind is not clear. They, you got, they beat up on you so much that the, the head is not clear anymore. Uh, so forgive me. Uh, what is it again? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That is the top price. This is what they do. This is what they excel at doing, is to induce us to indulge in pleasure, in the pursuit of pleasures, to the point where they got the Americans here to put it in the American Constitution. Hmm. The pursuit of pleasurable happiness. <laughs> what they, what's, what's fascinating is that the Americans think it's perfectly okay to pursue happiness. They don't realize that the demons exactly are waiting just around the corner. As soon as you're happy, they have you by the throat. And they begin your personal destruction. It's the demons extremely, extremely dangerous. And they always win. Ultimately, they destroy the world. And that's why uh, for us, as in particular monks, okay, when they're not sleeping, mm, they apply themselves, develop skills 
in order to combat these demonic forces. Okay? Yeah. And people don't realize that we have a big job to do. It's not like we're here you know, on a pedestal and for you to make offerings and give money in houses and so forth. Nothing wrong with that, by the way, uh, in my personal opinion. But uh, actually, the real job for the monks and nuns uh, uh, is to slow down the demons, to slow down the decay of the world, okay? So that uh, people have a chance, so that we have more time to save living beings. If we, if we leave uh, and, and give a free reign to the demons, they will destroy the world in a flash. And you know, and along, and in, in the process, they also are destroying themselves. That's how stupid the demons are. Go ahead, Wei Meng. Oh, um, uh, yeah, the pursuit, pursuit of happiness. Um, I feel like when I uh, um, cultivate, I'm pursuing happiness. But it's, it's, it's a happiness that's more deeply rooted in peace than it is in pleasure. And I think a lot of people have the mistake that the way out of suffering is through pleasure um, rather than through cultivation and finding peace instead. So I, I, I think that the pursuit of happiness is valid, but I think it's gone about in the wrong way. Yes. Uh, the bottom line is that we need to be happy to, con you know, to, conti to, to, to continue to apply ourselves. Uh, However, however, uh, what we don't realize is that the demons sneak in and distort our, uh, confuse us so that we begin to become uh, destructive for ourselves without knowing it, without realizing it. And that's why they're extremely dangerous. Uh, it's amazing on how the the most dangerous things in the world, the most destructive things in the world, are actually created, invented by the demons. They're pervasive, they are everywhere. They are in, in the universities, they are hospitals, they are in churches, they are in temples, they are in the Sangha, they are everywhere. Okay, they are pervasive. Uh, and that's why it's very, very, they're very difficult to deal with. Uh, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. Um, in Hinayana, okay, uh, they have a lot of sound hearers who have wisdom, supposedly have wisdom, but uh, they are absolutely no match to the demons. And that's why. Uh, what the Hinayana and Theravadan people don't realize in Buddhism is that we know on our Mahayana side, we know that they cannot hack it, they cannot defend themselves because the demons outsmart them. Uh, the de demons have more powers than them. They're much more powerful than the sound hearers. And therefore the sound hearers are basically helpless against the demons. So that's why we have to go over to their side and and support them without that, they have no chance. Okay, so in the thriving Hinayana systems of the world, whether it's Thailand, whether it's wherever you name it, okay, when they're thriving thing over the history of Buddhism, and one of the things to me that comes to mind immediately is the Thai system of Buddhism. It's thriving for a long, long time. And I was, I was very, very impressed by that. And then I looked closely at their leaders and the people in charge, and I realized they're actually bodhisattvas. Because I know that my ahat and sound here disciples, they are totally helpless against demons. Demons can, can run circles around them. 
and they would they can't tell. They, they wouldn't know. Wei Mang. Uh, oh, yeah. Shouldn't we have a uh, compassion on these demons? Because, like you said, they're destroying themselves in the process. And yesterday we talked about kindness and compassion. Yeah. So, uh, shouldn't we have compassion on the demons? We should. But must we? There's a difference between must and should. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I, um, I, th I think it's a good idea to have compassion on the demons. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I mean, you're, you're the good knowing advisor. So if, whatever you say, Master. I say nothing. Is that commentary? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Jim, you, you look depressed. Is it okay? What's, what's happening in Russia? The motherland. Uh, I would say nothing good over there. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's interesting because the demons, when they succeed, okay, that's when they get themselves to destroy themselves as well. <laughs> it's fascinating. And that's why, that's why, that's why it, it's, so, it's so intriguing to see how the demons operate. Okay? Uh, anyway, and so, so, uh, the point here on this slide 746 is that beware if you uh, pursue pleasures most likely that you are falling into a demon's trap whether you try inhaling okay or you try injecting, okay? Or you try pills, or you try drinking, okay? All those things are demonic traps, including what? Pursuing pleasures from meditation. What these people don't realize is that they meditate, you know, like you learn meditation, you enjoy it, and you follow your teacher, your future teacher, and they, oh, meditate, you're going to be so blissful, so wonderful, okay? You like it, you love it, you now, you experience nothing you ever experienced before, okay? And that's when the demons come in, right into our Chan world. So what do we do to counteract? We make you sit in full lotus longer so that you experience more pain on a regular basis. <laughs> yes, two. Wouldn't it be more beneficial for them to steal the blissfulness from meditation rather than stealing the pleasure? You know, steal the... everything. <laughs> Here's what happens. Uh, it's much easier to confuse you when you're seeking pleasures than, than, than when you're seeking bliss. Okay? When you're seeking bliss, your mind is clearer. So it's much harder to confuse you. Whereas when you're seeking pleasure, your mind is scattered. That's why it's just so easy. Like child's play. You know, it's so easy to confuse someone, someone who's scattered. 
<laughs> All right? Blue. Two. So if the demon is looking for some challenges, then could they go into people that have samadhi and just prefer sealing the bliss instead? They are everywhere. Uh, they are doing everything possible. They are all sorts of demons. They are doing everything and doing their part to destroy our world. The sooner the better. They are in politics. They are in political parties. They are in mayoral offices, in gubernatorial offices. They are in churches. They are in Buddhist temples. They are in Catholic uh, 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 pastors, I mean uh, uh, fathers. They are in Buddhist um, monks and nuns and so forth. They are everywhere. Okay, doing the job. Okay, now when I say that, are you scared? Are you scared? Should you be scared? No, don't be such a chicken. We tell you about it so that you're aware, because once you're aware, then there are remedies, that's all. Let them try to destroy the world. Let them try to confuse you. Let them try to make you more depressed. Let them try to make you, uh, to weaken you, because we have remedies for all those. Let them try to make you suffer. They may succeed first in getting you to pursue pleasures, but ultimately, right behind the, the facade of pleasure, you experience suffering. That's when Buddhism will save you. That's why we're not afraid of demons. If really demons are that dangerous, we should have killed the demons already. But we use demons in order to save you. It's nothing nothing to be afraid of. All we do is we describe the problem and then in order to remind you to look out for it and when you have such issues, we are around, we are available to assist you. And uh, for ordinary people, do not fall into this trap that I see too often, I saw it too often, is that ordinary people uh, overestimate themselves. They think they can figure it out. Let me assure you, bye, thank you. <laughs> Be good girl. Uh, it's interesting to see how the kids cooperate and they play together. Uh, when when, when the, the kids, uh, when we first uh, uh, started, the kids came to the temple and they fought each other and they cried and you know, and they, Mommy! And they cried. So but now it's like they cry and they fight, but then they cooperate. They're more harmonious than the Sangha. <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and that's why I find it fascinating that. Our uh, teacher, Master Shenhua, the way that the patriarchs train our, uh, their disciples is exactly, uh, they, are, they are exactly giving us antidotes to the traps that the demons lay upon us. And I assure you, what we're doing in very small, in very small capacity, very small uh, uh, sphere influence, but there are core, there are pillars of the support system. Okay? Uh, that's critical uh, for the long-term survival uh, for living beings. Wei Mountain, 
question. Uh, Master, every time I've uh, pursued pleasure, <clears throat> it, um, it, it, it goes bad. Just e every time I've just gone after pleasure, it's something bad happens uh, just my whole life, right? I mean, every, every time. But every time I've, you know, pursued uh, cultivation and f the way – it's everything has gone very, very right. So recently, uh, probably um, a, a month ago or something, I was pursuing, um, I was pursuing some f pleasure or kind of, I was, I was pursuing what money. A I, wanted, I wanted money. I wanted more money. And um, it led me to have a mental breakdown Oh no! And oh, oh, it was, it was really bad, but it ended up being the, one of the best things that ever happened to me because <clears throat> I made a really strong decision in my life to say uh, I um, I really just want to follow the way. And uh, so you went and saw a therapist. No, I just made a decision to. Um, I, I want to really, really just give up my ego and just follow the way. And since then, everything's just gotten a lot better in my life. Mm. Like ev everything, everything has gotten better mm. in my life. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Glad for so so the, the demons will set up the traps for you and make you think you're doing the right thing by pursuing things like that. And then they'll ruin everything in your life. But if you follow, you know, the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas do do what they tell you to do, it really feels like everything in your life actually balances out in the most perfect way and works out just beautifully. So, I mean, I'm just outrageously thankful for the Dharma that um, I, re I really feel like it, I'm more grateful and thankful for the Dharma I've ever been before. And because when you get older, we even you you become even more thankful. I know, I know, I'm gonna make mistakes again. I know, I, I, I mean, I know, I'm gonna pursue pleasure again and have these sorts of cycles and things happen again. But yeah, every every year, every every year, basically, I've been following this. I've become more and more grateful for the Dharma, and it's just it gets deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, that's all. That's what you just said here. Uh, uh, let me paraphrase it for you. Okay? Uh, just don't quit. And good things happen. In, in our world, it's very simple. We have these simple rules of thumb. Where you just you just simply you just don't quit, regardless of how difficult it is, how unbearable it is, you bear it like a man. You do that, you will improve. You quit, you cannot grow. You cannot learn. but it's easier said than done. Because if you do it wrong, you break. Okay? If you overdo it, you will fail and you will break your body, you will break your spirits. And therefore, there's a balance here you need to be aware of. Okay, uh, you cannot overdo it. Uh, that's why. That's why all of you you need to practice Chan daily. Chan practice daily. Chan practice is what gives balance to your life. If you don't practice Chan, you will be easily overwhelmed by external pressure. If you, the more pressure you have the more difficult it is for you, more unbearable for it is for you, that's when you only have to remind yourself, 
I need to meditate. That's all. Don't panic. Make time. Make the time to meditate. Because if you do that, you will find a solution to you that you could not see yourself. I promise you. Be patient. When it's so unbearable, you cross your legs and you meditate uh, for an hour or whatever, and you cannot see the solution, okay, never mind, go back to work. And next day, meditate again. Okay? You keep on doing that, okay? Especially when you are about to break down and you can't take it anymore, that's when you need to meditate. That's why I call balance. This is what you're being trained to do. Develop the ability, the skills to rebalance yourself. To recharge yourself before it's too late. That's how important Chan is. That's why Andre said earlier, I like appreciate more and more and more. Actually, what's, what he's referring to is the fact that he has a place called Wei Mountain Temple. He can show up and say, hey, uh, I like something to eat. I like to listen to the Dharma for a while and have a break from my, from my pursuits of pleasure. Okay? And that's what he found useful to restore balance and clarity of mind. Because if you didn't do that, you're easily confused by these bad actors in the 60s are in heaven, meaning the demons, heavenly demons. They are just way too good for us, for all of us. Myself included, okay? The demons who can outsmart me, who know my weaknesses, okay? There are all sorts of demons out there. Okay? That's why you should, should not live scared. They're there because the Buddhas allow them to be. They're there to help us cultivate. So don't be afraid. Just don't quit, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much suffering it is. You just don't quit. That's all. And you meditate. Okay? You can't take it. Instead of indulging in pleasure, okay, like, you know, like ordinary people, you know, it's not uncommon for, for you now, you're too young, you don't understand it. Let's say you in my world where, in my, my last world where, where you, uh, you, 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 uh, you uh, run uh, companies and you have a lot of employees, you are under tremendous pleasure, uh, pressure, uh, both at work and at home, okay, what you do is you go home or you go out with a friend, you, you take a drink because you need that to take a break from the mental stress and mental pressure they put upon you. Okay? So this is when people break down. You see that? They're waiting for you for those moments where you take a drink or you inhale. Okay? That's when you break down. Whereas what we're teaching you before it's too late, because when I see these executive, these successful people, okay, I tell them about, you need to do chant. They, say, <laughs> they laugh at me and they said, seriously? Actually, I went to Korea. I talked to an executive in a company. I saw him the last time. He came to me, he gave him his business card and said, here's my business card. Keep it. Don't ever forget my name. And what I did, I threw it in a garbage can right away. And said, if you tell me not to forget your name, that's when I want to forget your name. Okay? Uh, and then this time again, he came again. He said, I want to talk to you. I said, uh, who are you again? He says, we met before. I said, how? I said, where? The last time you were here. So he remembered me. I didn't remember him. And he said, seriously? And he said, and, and so he said, uh, so, so Sinan told him, give him your business card. 
He says, I give it to him already. I said, ah, you that one. <laughs> of all my things, uh, uh, only one lay person would dare give me his business card. That's him. And tell me that, remember my name. Don't you ever forget my name. Okay, so I forgot his name. I said, so that's how I remember. Okay, uh, and so what's interesting about this guy, he's an executive. Of a, of a large company. So he says, I'm the stage of my career right now where I'm peaking out. I don't feel that I have what it takes to get the next level, which is CEO. I want to be CEO. But right now, I'm fighting with my boss who is a CEO because I think I'm not capable of delivering. Okay, maybe I maxed out. What am I to do? I said, how about son? How about time meditation? It's just, who has that kind of time? We're too busy. I talked to him for half an hour. He got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> then he went down to, uh, went down, we uh, went up to our Buddha hall, we are on the second floor, went up to the fifth floor, our Buddha hall, and meditated for three hours. He says, Chan is a solution for me. Uh, in order for me to become a CEO, I need Chan. Okay? Yeah. I'm telling you, the typical people I know is that when they're successful, when they have some significant accomplishment, exactly that's the time they need Chan in order to take a step further. But it's too late to tell them. They say, hey, I'm a big shot. Who are you? You poor, I'm rich. You stupid, I'm smart. And they don't listen. And that's why the peak. Chan unleashes your potential. How? By letting the demons attack you. And that's what we do. That's why we're not afraid of demons. Wei Mang. Yeah, but see, that's, that's where the demons are helpful because when you get a big head and you think you're a big shot and the demons take you down and destroy you, and that's when you say, man, Chan is really the way. That's the way to go. Sometimes that's the only thing that can help you, which is I, I, I find that the demons doing that extremely beneficial. Good for you. What's the difference? between the people who are willing to listen and the people who are not willing to listen. After, after my talk, and a guy got so excited that he said, that's it, I'm going to do Chan, I don't care what they say. I said, not just Chan, I want you to go to exercise. You had to lose that belly fat, do you hear me? I said, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, it's weird. And I, said, it, I said, you one of the rare people that I talk to uh, who are successful and who says, uh, who would listen to me, to a nobody. No. And the difference being that they have the blessings. It takes a lot of blessings to be able to listen and believe. Hmm? And you don't believe, it's because you don't have enough blessings. You have blessings, it clicks immediately. Way Mountain. Oh, I was going to answer your question. You, I was going to say the difference is that those people haven't suffered enough. Possible. But you, if you suffer too much, you break down. Okay? You're right, but there is a, there's a danger there as well. It's rather delicate. It's not as simple as it sounds. 
That's why you need the clarity of mind. Okay, when life is out of control, your life is out of control. You make time for Chan because that's when you are at your best. You need to be at your best during those times. That Chan will bring the best out of you, guaranteed. That's how powerful Chan is. Why is that? Because you have tremendous potential. That waiting for an opportunity to come out. That process of Chan, the technique of Chan, will unleash that potential that you have. The Buddhas know that, and you know. You know, this is this is a thing that is so difficult to share with people because they said, you know, why why aren't you up out there beating everyone's door and say you do chan and get a newspaper and so forth? It's because it doesn't work that way. If you have the blessings. You look for us. We don't even need to talk to you. We need to call on you. You come and look for us naturally. You're drawn to it, like a, like like a like a like a, a deer being drawn to the headlamps of your car. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, it's amazing. But if you don't have the blessings, uh, we can talk to you until you, we blew in the face, and you don't believe. Not much we can do. Okay. All right. Any other questions and comments? And and that's why that's why. I, I, I started by telling uh, Xian Xin on the way to on our, our drive uh, this morning, early morning from San Jose to uh, San Francisco to start our day. Uh, I told her that, uh, that we're very fortunate that after all this time here, we have a very strong core team, uh, people who, are, who got a lot out of the practice and also uh, also got to a certain level of uh, understanding, uh, acquired some significant level of wisdom, and that's why, uh, that's why they, I'm hoping that many more will step up, many offered already to help, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to bring up the new project for them, because to me, uh, communications is in, has to be in video form, video format. Okay, uh, the thing that I was was uh, that that uh, I was taught uh, ten years ago by a white face guy, a pale face guy, who says videos, videos, videos. I said, I don't have the manpower, I don't have the money, I don't have the expertise. Okay, but now I'm hoping that we can put together a team of people who will create more and more videos and a team of people who create more and more texts. All the things we have here should be transcribed, okay? Should be, should be cut out into Dharma glimpses of, of uh, 30 seconds, two minutes to two minutes and so forth, okay? Because that's all people want. They cannot sit and watch for half an hour or three hours or, or, or ten hours, which the, we, the way we propagate the Dharma is I speak Dharma ten hours a week minimum. Okay? And no one has that kind of time except you. Okay? How many of you are there? Think about it. Hmm? Uh, and, and therefore, we need to cut it down so that we have these things that are of interest to people. Okay? Uh, the Dharma is most profound are the ones that are in two or three sentences. Because people are smart. All you need to do is remind them what's important. They understand themselves. They just forgot. That's all. Hmm? And that's why we need more videos. We need, we need you know, 
Peter to train, uh, you know, a team of video warriors who understand the Dharma and pick out, you know, Dharma glimpses and stuff like that. Because you understand this is where you came from. You say, oh, wow, this is Dharma, exactly what I needed when I was, you know, younger, when I was, you know, last year or three years ago, if I had this, I would have made my life a lot easier. Huh? My children's life a lot easier. Okay? Wait, Mom, and YouTube, go ahead. From Diego, do demons get tired of the same kind of pleasure? And maybe after a while they make you look for mindfulness, for example? Never. Except for some demons, actually. Okay, now you bright it up. Can I share with you a secret? We know demons try to destroy us and sneak into our ranks. And conversely speaking, we also send our people to sneak into their ranks as well. <laughs> One favor deserves an, to be reciprocated. So we have our people amongst the ranks in order to save them. <laughs> we say we have to save demons to ourselves. So that's why we're not afraid of demons at all. You should be afraid of, or we not. Okay? Peter, what do you think? Are you willing to train? I think we need more online classes for what I call Dharma warriors. Okay? Those are the people who have some level of wisdom, some understanding of the Dharma, and they can, you know, can create videos of the dharmas and I would have a new type of categories called Mahayana lifestyles like the French lifestyle you know style what's life without style Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Master. I'm. Uh, we can a hundred percent do it, and I think um, honestly, where we need the most help right now is people sharing the existing videos. Okay. Oh. There's so much good stuff that exists already. Yes. We need more and more people to share. So how do, how do people share? Let's talk about it. Yeah. How do so we share? I'm so, um, ignorant when it comes down to that. All I do is open my mouth and, and talk, 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 talk. I'm all talk. <laughs> I, I would say the, the best way to describe that would be um, to let Venerable XX know if you're interested to learn more because she and I are going to be organizing a training session where we can do a deep dive and teach you step by step how to propagate the Dharma with social media, media sharing. Okay, very good. And also the one thing that personally of interest to me is that the search. And we need to have uh, videos that target important issues in the world right now. For example, I'm very target-oriented, okay, goal-oriented, meaning to me, Mahayana is too big, okay, and therefore, we need to break it down to bite sizes, more digestible, uh, make it more digestible to people, so in particular, okay, mm. What I talk about life, Mahayana lifestyles, or Buddhist lifestyles, is that it should address issues that are important to people right now. What bothers me, not only to people, to us as well, what bothers me is we're losing young people to depression. Okay? And the young people got depressed, and somehow many of you who survived and became uh, professionals, like lawyers, uh, uh, therapists, and so forth, you depress yourself. 
Okay, so uh, and 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 uh, these young people, what what bothers me, they kill themselves prematurely, and we need to have uh, topics, uh, SEOs, whatever, so that when people search for those things, they we we are available. Okay, we offer our perspectives hmm? to give them a chance and not waste their lives. I don't know how to do that, but you, uh, you uh, geeks, I mean professionals, uh, probably know better. I, all I care about is I have a problem. What can we do, for example? I need to get, to that with, that, get together with all of you and ask you, what can we do? You know, our dharma, you give me a depressed person, okay? I feel we have pretty strong chances of helping that person become lead a normal life. And why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we available when people are crying for help, screaming for help? And what does it take to do that? You have to tell me. We will um, absolutely love to have support from uh, disciples interested. Again, please let Venerable XX know um, because we are working on organizing um, blog content for the website. And that is where we can have uh, SEO optimization for topics like uh, depression in young women, for example. Yes. And when people search for it, yes. they have a Mahayana, American Mahayana response. I want you to be specific. Don't give me a big thing like save the world. The world's too big for me. I, I can't understand how I can save the world. But let me say, for example, uh, something a smaller group, okay? Not the world. Let me say the 16 to 17 uh, to 20 year old, depressed people who try, think of killing themselves, or harming themselves, or who quit on life. Let's try to help those. For example, okay? I want not just that idea. But I need someone who says, I want to do it. Someone has to take the initiative. Because it's not my job. It's not a monk's job. It has to be a lay person's job. We monks are supposed to see a better stall, remember? Okay? I think you should discuss it over. You know, like the, the gal behind you, the, the one who knows, who's seen a lot of sick people, and say, what can we do hmm, to help these people so that they have a chance to... And they should know, they should look for help. They need to ask for help. Don't be so proud. Even the ahats need help. Even the bodhisattvas need help. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, and, and, and to your point, Master, if I may, um, we're also working on building asset management and um, project management software. So when people have ideas and they want to help and they have pictures of events and they want to centralize it so the temple has it at its disposal, mm -hmm. that we can make this actionable. Absolutely. You know, another thing, too, that I'd like to share with you today at lunch, I really enjoyed lunch. Even though I ate breakfast this morning, and I don't feel like eating lunch. Uh, I'm full. <laughs> uh, this morning I ate uh, Korean instant noodles. <laughs> uh, I'm not used to eating breakfast. That's why I don't, I don't understand how people can eat breakfast and then lunch. I just don't even have time to digest the food. Anyway, uh, and, and uh, at lunch I was so excited because my disciple says, Master, I want to start 
a meditation class. I say, another one? He says, yeah, another one. I say, doing what? He says, I just want a meditation class for Vietnamese only. I say, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we have so many classes right now in for Vietnamese now. We're going to have one for Vietnamese. We have one for Chinese, one for English, one for uh, oh, everyone, and so forth. All kinds of classes. It's wonderful. You see, you're reaching out. You're at the stage where you have the skills and you have all, it, and all we need now is your desire, the drive to do it. And you know what? When you do that, the support will come. Don't worry. Okay? The young monks and nuns, let me tell you, they said, let me build a temple. Let me, let me become famous. No. Oh, it's exactly the opposite we need to do. We acquire the skills first. Okay? The ability to help. And then, number two, we uh, commit to help. We say, I want to help. I've been waving at someone of my disciples who says, I want to help the Vietnamese. Because we have successful programs for the Chinese. They have successful programs for English. Okay? But the Vietnamese, have no one stepped up. And today, finally, someone says, I want to step up. I want to do it. I was so excited. Okay? That's what it takes to me. Someone with the burning desires, I want to do it. Okay? Uh, and if, if you do that, eventually, uh, you get support. If, you're, if you have the skills, people will step up and support you. Nothing to worry about. Okay? Daniel, I hate to destroy this peace and calm <laughs> this experience for 20 seconds. Um, Master, what, what, what if we have obstacles? We want, to, we want to help out, we want to do things, but we just feel like, like I felt like I had that burning feeling of wanting to do things, and right now I just feel like defeated. I feel like just I gotta just live my life and pay bills and all that. And yeah, that's called compromise. That's called the middle way. You cannot. You cannot. You have to be reasonable. You can do. You can only do the best you can under the circumstances. Hmm? Hmm. So in order to help, our attitude is that. It's good to, to want to help, but you need to develop skills to help. It takes time to develop skills. Once you have skills, then you will find opportunities to help. Hmm? So be patient. Anyone else? You see, it's fun. It's fun to be able to, to, uh, to uh, make a difference in people's lives. And you know, uh, I want to thank you, all of you, for your support throughout all these years. Okay? And, and I know we couldn't get here we are today without all of your support. I know that. So, thank you. And uh, I hope more and more of you, especially uh, uh, those that, uh, that who have uh, wisdom, will uh, more and more of those people will step up to help propagate the Dharma by producing and by teaching.
my job now is to speak the Dharma and train the teachers. I don't have time to to teach the students anymore. Hmm. I have less and less time to do that. I need to spend time training the teachers. Wei Mount. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, Daniel, I just wanted to say, uh, I've experienced the feeling that you're, that you're describing. Uh, I, I can't say it's the exact same thing, but when you said your words, I, I felt empathy for what you're feeling. And, and just to share with you, when I felt defeated in the past, when I was trying to do something to contribute to Temple, that was my obstruction that I had to overcome. And the only way I was able to overcome it was just, it may be my, my stubbornness, but I just said, I'm just not going to be defeated. I'm going to do this. And I just, and I just did it. I don't have a simpler way of putting it than that, but I just want to share with you that I, I have confidence in you and I know that you can overcome it too if you put your mind to it. Very good, thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Everyone in Samadhi? Or is the computer who froze? The computer has froze. See, because look on them, wow, they're in Samadhi. None of them moved. Okay, going back to 746, slide number 746. There's a Chinese saying in the Master Shinoha's teaching. It says that this body here uh, is very, this human body is very difficult to uh, obtain. Now you have it. Okay? Very difficult to attain this human body. Furthermore, the, the Buddha Dharma is very difficult to hear. Uh, and so therefore, uh, if this very life you fail to cross over this body, uh, when are you going to be able to? Okay. Uh, there are two concepts here, and, and that's very important that the Chinese stress and the ancient, the sages stress. Number one is that it's very difficult, difficult to get a human body, extremely difficult. Okay, that's a fact. After you die, uh, it's very difficult to come back as human being, extremely difficult. Be it the reason being that you create more offenses than you do more bad than good. That's the nature of our existence. That's why it's very difficult to come back to this place. Again, we will sink. Most of us will sink, including monks and nuns. That's how easy it is to sink. Okay? So it's very difficult to get the human body. Furthermore, uh, in order to save this human body, you need the Buddha Dharma. That's the only way. No, nothing else would work. The Buddha says so. Not me. Okay? Uh, it's what the Buddha said. The Buddha said, without that Buddha Dharma, you cannot save this, this human body. Those are very important concepts. We cannot go out and say, we are the only one who can save you. Catholics and Mormons and and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, Christians and so forth. You can't say that. What we can do is make it available so that when people you know, are in trouble and they did a search online or ask around for all the possible things they could try, and they try everything else, we should be among those options. We, I'd be glad. I'd be very happy if we are the last one they found. Okay? Yeah. If they can survive all the others, and we're the last one, okay? Then 
we have very strong sh chances of helping them and making a difference. Hmm. Okay. That is what I hope is going to happen. Okay. We should be available for people as an option that you should try. Okay? Hmm. Uh, and, uh, and so he said, I need to save this body. <sighs> I don't subscribe to this. It's uh, too Hinayana to me. It is misinterpreted as Hinayana. Okay? Uh, I would change his Chinese teaching. I, I've I read it many times and I used to believe in this. Now, where we're standing, I don't feel that it's um, appropriate for our times. Okay? Uh, and the message I want to send you is that yes, very difficult to have, have a human body, take advantage of it, use it to practice the Buddha Dharma because it's very difficult to encounter the proper Dharma, not just the proper Dharma, but the supreme Dharma, the, the, the Buddha's Dharma, the patriarch's Dharma is extremely difficult. Okay, uh, so that's a fact. For us Buddhists, professional, we know that, okay? And now you have the chance, then go for the gusto. Don't just save yourself. Hmm? Become a bodhisattva. Become enlightened so that you can save others. Forget about saving yourself. Too small for me. I have a problem with this, this thinking here. Okay? It's too small. It's not worthy of you. I'm looking at all of you. Hmm? It's too small for you. Don't settle for such insignificant goals. Hmm? I want you to be more ambitious. If you, all you can think of is yourself, me, 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 me. I'm going to save myself. I'm going to get, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to pursue my own happiness. That's so small. You're missing out on these opportunities. They want to help everyone. When you have a chance to help, help anyone and everyone. That's us. Don't be a small thinker. Hmm? You think small because you told that that's all you're capable of. I'm undoing that. I'm telling you, you can do a lot more than you think. Stop thinking of yourself. That's the first step. Hmm? You're here. And you keep on coming back. That means you have blessings. You have such blessings, apply them for greater goals, for greater good. And just, just instead of just yourself. Okay? Does it help? Very important. I know this phrase here. In Chinese, they, they, that's what they teach. In Vietnamese, that's what they teach. And, and it makes sense. And, it is, and it's Buddhist teaching. But it's too small. I have a problem with it. It limits your potential. It caps Your ceiling. Okay. All right. And that's so typical of Western education. They limit themselves. Seven forty-seven. I still have some time. What time are we off? Like two thirty, right? Uh, 
Specifically, there were celestial king attainment of self mastery. 所谓得自在天王。Okay, so this uh, commentary, uh, this uh, this uh, six desire heaven, this demon king. What did I tell you? I opened my big mouth and said, "We also send bodhisattvas to become demons as well, act as our spies." And feed us information, and and confuse the other demon kings. And guess what? Here's one: attainment of self mastery. Self mastery is a Mahayana concept, not a Hinayana concept. Hmm? What do Hinayana people teach there? Followers, they don't teach self mastery, do they? No, they don't. What do they teach? Yes, Daniel. Uh, uh, liberation. Liberation. Mm -hmm. What else do they teach? It's too bad we don't have any Theravadan. Brothers or Hinayana experts. Hmm? I don't know what they teach because I never really uh, took a course from a Hinayana teacher. Because I read uh, some of their uh, uh, sermons and I I fell asleep very quickly. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of. A lot of、uh, confusion. I couldn't follow their logic, their reasoning, and their perspectives. So anyway,、mm. so uh, the 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 uh, the uh, Hinayana they teach about、uh, put an end to your own suffering. That's what、uh, Daniel is right. Liberation, but specifically liberation from your own personal suffering. It's very specific. They realize their suffering, therefore they do everything possible to put an end to it as quickly as possible. And that's Hinayana. Okay,、yeah. Mahayana is that we strive for Tuan. What do we strive for in Mahayana? Yeah. Five.、Uh, thank you, Master Chan. <laughs> I've been here all day, and you've been working all day, so I don't want you to miss this point. You work all day, and you miss this point here. Your work has been in vain. <laughs> so demanding we are. <laughs> so, Mahayana,、uh, we seek self mastery. What is self mastery? So mastery means that others, like your wife, cannot afflict you. I mean, you cannot afflict your wife. Wait, wait. Which other way? <laughs> I'm confused. And there's a fog in my mind sometimes. You know,、and、it's not clear is which one is more important, the wife or me, me or my wife. <laughs>、uh, but anyway, being under the French influence, I always think the wife is more important. Never mind. Okay. So self mastery is that. You are not afflicted, no matter what.、Hmm? You have huge success, big deal. You have huge failure, so what? That's self mastery. Why is it important? The people 
who are, have self mastery are not afraid of suffering, a pain, of discomfort, of not getting what they want. They're not afraid. Bring it on. Wei Mang. Good afternoon, Master. Welcome back. We all miss you. Oh, come some yeah. Oh, uh, doche, doche. I mean, uh, we don't need someone who speak Cantonese. Teacher Chan in Cantonese. Hey, boy, you want to? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Um. What? I got a question for my Hinayana teacher. I wonder if you would say it's a Hinayana or Mahayana teaching. It's a real situation. Um, there was a girl, a, a disciple. She was telling um, the a Hinayana master saying that she is trying to work uh, so that she could donate money to the temple. And the teacher said, uh, you need to spend more time to meditate, uh, worry more about that. So what do you say, Master? Is that a Mahayana or Hinayana teaching? Should we, uh, so should she spend time to meditate more or work and make money to donate to the temple? Which one? I prefer make money and donate to the temple. Thank you. You asked for my personal opinion, right? Yes, correct. Okay. There you go. Anything else? Uh, any other wisdom I can share with you? Are you going to ask me why? Master. Say, <laughs> we? Oh, I mean, excuse me, uh, what's uh, Cantonese for why again? Tuan, your chiu chow is close enough. <laughs> we don't have any Cantonese people. Huh? Why? How do you say why in Cantonese? Ni dong hao? Ni zi dai. Ni zi dai. Tim kai. Tim dai. Okay, why? Hmm? Would you like to ask why? Yes, tìm cãi à, sư phụ. Tìm cãi à. It's wrong to assume you can meditate. It's wrong to assume that you meditate and you will be able to make progress. It is so wrong. In Mahayana, we teach you to create blessings first. Hmm? Don't, try, don't try so hard to meditate. Create blessings. When you have blessings, Meditation is very easy. When you don't have blessings, meditation is very, very hard. Okay? So that's why the pale-faced people, the Westerners, when they learn meditation, they come to the temple, they come to places and say, okay, here's $50. Let me meditate. Okay? Teach me meditation. And we teach them and so forth. Uh, some classes are more expensive from the, the so-called so-called experts, meditation teachers, and so forth, okay? And guess what? They can't meditate because they don't have enough blessings. So what are you going to do? You keep meditating and, and you get nowhere because you don't have enough blessings. So that's why if you want to cultivate, create blessings first. Don't meditate. Wei Mang. I, I forgot, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> you forgot the question? Yeah. Oh, um, no, I forgot. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay, anything else? Is, is there still a way mountain question? Yes, Master. Yes. So, what's a way that pale faces like me can build blessings before we meditate? You are building blessings. Continue. You've been doing it since 10 years ago. That's what saved you. So somebody who just shows up to the temple who wants to meditate but is having problems. No. no. What happened is some of them are successful because they have blessings before already. And that's why they make progress very fast. If you find yourself meditating, you struggle and you're not making progress, uh, you should ask. Okay? Uh, but in general, the approach should be that you should learn in order for you to learn about Chan, learn about cultivation, okay? You need to create blessings. You simply, don't simply just meditate. The best thing is to create blessings and meditate at the same time, okay? Or, or, if you don't have that ability, for example, you don't know who can teach you or you cannot find a teacher that you feel uh, is, uh, has a track record of producing students and so forth, and just because a teacher is famous doesn't mean that's going to help you. Okay? Hmm. So, uh, if you do not find the proper instructor and so forth, this is what you do. You create a lot of blessings. You plant blessings with Mahayana, with Mahayana as stress. And then, number two, you pray to the Buddhas and Bodhisattva. Please, point me to a teacher who can help me. And this is what they're not taught. Okay? If I were to say, you should learn meditation, uh, so I would teach you. So my class will fill up with people who come and meditate. And then you know, maybe a thousand of them come and then 999 would drop out in a week, in a month, in a year. Okay? Frustrated and say, I'm never try meditation again because you get nothing out of it. Rather, if you teach them properly, maybe you not, may not have a thousand people, you have like four. <laughs> four, maybe four. It's not qual a qu quantity, it's quality. But those four are the ones that make a difference in society, in their families, in their communities at their jobs. That's what matters. Wei Meng. Okay, I remembered. It was a comment. Um, so my parents have been practicing meditation. Well, here, here's what happened. I brought them to the temple uh, w one year uh, I think it was uh, 2019, and it was my birthday, and I said, hey, for my birthday, let's go to the temple and meditate. So we went to the temple and meditated, and um, after that, they liked meditation, but they didn't like the fact that uh, we were sitting in full lotus. So they <laughs> they found some Western uh, meditation teachers, and, and they haven't come back to the temple since, but... They found Western meditation te teachers, but the the problem with that is, yeah, it, it's it's not firmly rooted with the blessings and stuff. My dad meditates every day, and my mom 
well she's been uh, she's been meditating a bit and doing yoga and stuff but the the problem is you know they're still so afflicted and um the, it, it, it i think i think the proof is when uh um when things go bad uh what do you, what do you do like do you really lash out at with your afflictions or do you uh try to follow the uh the right way and i just keep seeing them you know really really get extremely afflicted and fight and fight and fight and uh so i just don't have a lot of faith in the western meditation model because i i've seen it um and it and you know they don't make a lot of progress the same way we make we make progress here a lot more quickly mm -hmm. absolutely very good anything else okay hmm. and so this particular heavenly king here we have a a minute left particular king here uh, when you use the word self-mastery that means you're enlightened not just enlightened but you this level of enlightenment here is very very high before you you can qualify it as self-mastery a lot of enlightened people do not have some self-mastery because they are not the wisdom is not strong enough yet they're not strong enough that's why uh, the demon can still come and disrupt them so they cannot have self-mastery is that clear okay so this is a tip for you you know the, the chinese they keep on using the word self-mastery self-mastery is this self-mastery that let me remind you okay self-mastery here refers to the mahasattvas not regular bodhisattvas. Regular bodhisattvas, in my humble opinion, don't have self-mastery at all. Wei Mao. Uh, Master already answered the question, but I have another one. Um, of course. Wusheng and non-retreating, are they referring to a ground above bodhisattva? Non-retreating? And Wu Sheng Fa Ren. Wu Sheng Fa Ren is, is, uh, uh, is uh, four stage Ahat. Okay. Thank you, Master. Okay. Thank you, everyone. You've been very special. Don't run away. <laughs> Please. Let's do reverse transference to help these uh, people go to the pure land.
मेरे दो बिचारन दे हाँ मेरे दो बिचारन दो जे मेरे जे जे नो जे दो जारे सब नमो हमे दो पुए दो दो जे दो ये दो दिया दो मेरे दो पुए हमेरे दो सीतां बुपे हमेरे दो बीजारं दे हमेरे दो बीजारं दो जे मिने जे जे नो जे दो जारे सब नमो हमे दो पुए दो दो जे दो ये दो दिया दो मेरे दो बुपे हमेरे दो सीतां बुपे हमेरे दो बीजारं दे हमेरे दो बीजारं दो जे मिने जे जे नो जे दो जारे सब नमो सावधान दो ये दो वारुजे दिया संबुला संबुला हो नमो सावधान दो ये दो वारुजे दिया संबुला संबुला हो नमो सावधान दो ये दो Rujdiya sambula sambula ho namu sirpoye nando ye do ye da chido an sir sir bola sir bola sir saba. Namu sirpa ye, nando ye do ye, da chi do sir sir, bola sir bola sir saba. Namu sirpa ye, nando ye do ye, da chi do. Sir, bola sir, bola sir, saba. Aye ye na sambua barira ho. Aye ye na sambua barira ho. Aye ye na sambu.
Ding ni fu shu di
な。